name is Ibrahim Ben Kako. Well, I'm a member of parliament here. I'm also the chairman in charge of um, NAXA and all the NGOs in Sierra Leone. Most members of parliament are very young people, and it's a deliberate policy of the government. And also, like I just told you, that even the members of the press gallery here, the people who report the news events in parliament are also very young people. Um, like I said earlier, the president gives a lot of premium in the development of young people who can easily take over from us uh, by the time we leave this place. Well, each political party has its own um, requirements. Uh, for the time being, we have only two parties in parliament. These are democracy. Um, we have the All People's Congress Party, of which I'm a member, and we have the Opposition Salon People's Party. In our own case, we have the rules, regulations that will qualify you to be a candidate to contest for the party. In other words, you must be a member of the party, you must be a paid up member of the party, you should be educated enough to represent the party, and then um, you should be prepared to contest in an open election um, against members of the position. If you can meet those requirements, and if the party leadership is very certain that you can meet those requirements, then of course you are a candidate and you can contest against the other political parties. Well, in the first instance, you are serving your own people. Um, in the second place, you also want to make sure that whatever knowledge you have, you disseminate it um, in the interest of the people of this country. And also, it makes it possible for you to be recognized internationally. Um, in this present parliament, we have members of parliament who are also members of the African Union, who are members of ECOWAS, who are members of, um, of the, the Mano River Union, etc., etc. Which means that um, these people are also benefiting internationally. Um, uh, like the European Union, we also have representation there, the ACP, which means that these members of parliament are also benefiting internationally. And also, it is also part of the rebranding of this country. Um, in other words, parliamentarians go out of this country and they put together those things that are about Sierra Leone and they rebrand the, the image of this country. To us, it's important. But again, like I said earlier on, being a member of parliament will help you in the whole business of developing the country. My name is Samura Kamara, Minister of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation, Sierra Leone. The youth in Sierra Leone are, are very vibrant, but um, I think the government, as a government, the president has tried, has tried significantly to bring them on board, to increase the participation in the government as well as in nation building, in economic spheres. But I still believe we, we have a lot to do in developing their skills, in training, uh, in trying to, to, to bring them as leaders, you know, as leaders of society and this sort of thing. So I personally believe um, we're on the right track, but it takes time. It is time because leadership training, uh, entrepreneurial training, these are the type of investments that we need to do to, to scale up the participation of, 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 of the youth. But also preparing them. You have to prepare them as very good uh, entrepreneurs. You have to prepare them as leaders in all spheres of, of governance uh, in, in, in the society. So that's our challenge, and that's the challenge, uh, just as you mentioned, the president is undertaking it. The fact that in the cabinet today, we have quite a number of very young guys, uh, young people. I think that's very helpful. It's very encouraging. <laughs> Well, we have a, a commission, a youth commission, that is headed by a youth. Uh, the Ministry of Youth uh, also is also headed by a youth, a very young man. Um, in fact, we have given them a little bit more power because they are not only members of parliament, but they are ministers. They, he they head the youth institutions. The commission and the ministry that is in charge of youth is headed by, by Mahmoud, a very young person. Um, who is doing very well that, in that regard. Because like I said, 
uh, programs are very, very youth-oriented, and the president is very concerned that we begin to put in place the mechanism so that our young people can take over from us, which is very important as well. Honorable Ibi Kaibo, could you please tell us about him? Ibi Kaibo is a household name in Sierra Leone in many respects, um, both in terms of um, his contribution to the media, more particularly in the media, because he carried a, a very popular and reputable newspaper, and um, uh, at the same time his contribution to the politics of the country, and prior to that also as an academician. But for me, uh, my relationship with uh, Ibrahim Ben Kabu started at uh, high school. Um, we are in the same secondary school in, the, in Bo, the second largest city in the country in the southern province of, of Sierra Leone. We both come from the north. Uh, I, come from the far, I come from the farther north of the country. But then it happened that we met at the secondary school. But the funny thing about uh, our relationship at school was that uh, I was in the second form. He was uh, probably fourth form. And then uh, we had a, the American lecturers, uh, management of the school introduced a political party system for the leadership, student leadership of the school. And uh, in Form 2, we worked together with uh, Form 1 and Form 3, and then our party won. So we won against Ibi Kabo's party. <laughs> and so from so I was his senior prefect. <laughs> from two. And when you won against him, how was he? <laughs> what well, I will tell you. Was it, was it like the politics <laughs> of the leadership or That's it was still a small political no, system? It was the politics of the, le- <laughs> of the system that was introduced. But of course, uh, being small boys, uh, ruling the school, the other students, we had to run after school, for more they would beat us. So, but then I think they realized what we have done and then the, our government lasted for only one month. <laughs> and then they, they, they won. Now, we've had that story between the two of us and uh, it's been a very familiar provocation type of, uh, type of story. Now, after that, I, we, I used to visit him in his, um, in his um, newspaper shop. We used to sit there socially, we would meet, we would go out, this sort of thing. I was uh, at the central bank. Uh, he was in the newspaper business, this sort of thing. Now, it's when um, I joined uh, the government of uh, Dr. Anes Bakroma that um, I, I B and I went straight into into serious politics. Of course, prior to that, he had joined politics earlier because he was a member of a political party, like a running mate or something, Edward Cabo, late, uh, the late Edward Cabo, who had his own party. But throughout the time, whether in politics or otherwise, I B Cabo and I had always been together. We would exchange ideas and this sort of thing. And and, and when I became a Financial Secretary, the Minister of Finance. He also, he also was, was in politics, so he used to come to, to the ministry to, to seek uh, the type of um, budgetary uh, support and, and this sort of thing. And then finally, uh, when I graduated from that, uh, again, when I was Central Bank Governor, he and I were very close. We've always been close. Until when I became Minister of Finance in, in 2009, that's when um, we actually became much, much closer in, in, in the political system because he was then in, in, in information. So we, we were working together. Um, I must tell you, it's, it's a very simple, perhaps it's our upbringing. We remain to be very simple person, people, you know, down to earth. Uh, try to live with with the people. Of course, this is the, the the principle of the political party to which both of us belong. The, the ruling party, APC, All People's Congress, is is a grassroots party. So all our activities, our actions, tend to more 
Yeah, we hear that is a is a youth oriented uh, personality that carries the youth along in all he's doing. How true is that? Well, yes, this is true. Is that's the the spirit of the All People's Congress Party, and of course, Sierra Leone also is a youthful population, uh, and therefore wherever you go, you, you see youth around you, so it's compelling to to to, to be along with the youth. But of course. Um, as we were talking earlier, the fact that the Minister of Youth is not a, in Nigeria is not a youth. It started in Sierra Leone. Yeah. My uncle, my my late uncle, was a youth leader when the the youth brigade type of system was introduced by the late um, um, uh, vice president from from Port Loco, I uh, um, Suri Kuruma. He passed away. Yes, uh, so chroma. Now, my late uncle was about 65. He was a youth leader. Oh. <laughs> and at that time, I was still, I'm sure I was treated in the nursery. <laughs> I was a bit. I was a bit. Uh, <laughs> a youth leader of 65 years old. <laughs> yes. How was that? How was it a, a contribution to the youth? Well, he gave them orientation, he gave them advice. And this was the beginning of Youth Brigade that was, um, that was introduced by the former Vice President of Sierra Leone. Through the youth, uh, the youth concept, introduced um, the voluntary type of uh, self-help programs. You know, these were the origins of, of, of the use of the youth uh, in the society. And so you find that all of us grew through that system. We're always very, very much together. You know, uh, whenever we meet with Abby, you know no difference. You always think we just started yesterday. The relationship is very cordial. You know, we have no arguments unless we go into intellectual arguments. And the good thing is that he's friendly across parliament, all parliamentarians. I know his closest friend uh, in the media, um, is Honorable Frank Bosoa. He's on the other side of the house of the party, but they're always together. If I met him in Kenema, so you know a difference. That's the thing about about uh, the way the political system works here. You will hear all the criticisms and everything, but when we meet, you don't see any difference. <laughs>
and flat building. So it means that if I go to my home, I have a place where I can speak. But again, it's a spot, which is a one flat building. I think this is the kind of thing we need here. Uh, one of my friends told me years back that uh, when you build a very big house, you don't think that you are creating problems for your children. Because after you have passed away, when it comes to take care of the building, they may not be able to take care of it. And uh, it will be a waste of money and a waste of funds. And I've seen those lights all over the country, buildings that are built by people who are very, very uh, industrious, uh, but to, to not take care of those buildings now, because uh, they exaggerated the uh, ability to build the house. And some of them, that children cannot even take care of the buildings. The buildings are falling apart. My name is Ibrahim Ben Kako, uh, a Sierra Leonean from the northern province of the country. But I see myself more first and foremost as a Sierra Leonean, uh, which to me is very, very important. Well, now I'm in Parliament uh, representing my people in Parliament to constitute 030. But well before that, uh, I've had myself doing quite a number of things. I started life after university in 1969. As a school teacher, uh, I taught uh, Bo in the southern province, and uh, I went to I gravitated to the point of um, vice principal in that school, the St. Andrew Secondary School, which also happened to be my alma mater. And then after that, I was promoted to Patlakov in the northern province, where I was appointed principal of the Shilenka Secondary School. I served there for a very, very long time, and as you know, I would have entered these institutions as a young man. Uh, I was very, very young when I was appointed to the school. First day, I was about 38, 29 years old. Uh, but after some time, I just thought I should go somewhere else. And I also doubled uh, my efforts with the journalism. And uh, we established a newspaper in Twitter. And, uh, which became a very, very famous newspaper, that was that in 1978. So I later on left and went to the United States. And uh, I was supported by the American government uh, to go to the University of Syracuse on a special program uh, sponsored by the American State Department, where I was also introduced to some forms of journalism the mass media in America, that was uh, the topic. And uh, we had this kind of training before I came back to Sierra Leone. Um, I established what is now known as the New City newspaper, which is a very old newspaper because uh, it was established uh, about 40 years ago. And uh, it is still about the oldest newspaper in this country existence. Now it is being edited by my son, Ibrahim Kabo Jr. Uh, yes, I'm very proud that I started it. I just survived up to this time. Even though we had difficulties all over the country at one time or the other, even during the war years, it survived. Then, of course, uh, I went into politics. I became a very close friend of President Shaka Stevens. And uh, I carried quite a number of news items on Shaka Stevens until I decided that um, I also wanted to go into full time politics. We thought in Sierra Leone that the war in Liberia should not be allowed to continue because we took the view that if we allow the war to, in Liberia to expand, it would spill over to Sierra Leone. And during that period, I was one of the five um, Sierra Leoneans nominated by the president to regularly travel to Liberia to find a way by which we could meet people like Fode Sanko, Chastelo and others. Uh, Dr. Bubakai Jabi, myself, um, Dr. Stevens, um, Colonel Yaya Kanu, Colonel Koka, and Colonel Williams, who died recently, who used to be uh, frequent visits to meet uh, um, the Nigerian contingent in, in, in Liberia. 
to bring the other fellows on board so that all of us can uh, discuss um, the way by which we could end the war in Liberia and in Sierra Leone because it has started spilling into Sierra Leone. But of course, we had no way out. Um, the war came to Sierra Leone, it was a brutal war, but thank God the war ended, uh, reconciliation took place, and today we are, both, we are very proud to state that Sierra Leone is a very peaceful country. Um, the president takes great respect for the role of the security people, and he thinks that um, they should perform their duties, and he makes sure that um, he provides all the things that they should have. Um, the Office of National Security, which is under the presidency, is very, very important. Uh, the president has discovered that um, you need effective and serious intelligence mechanism for you to avoid a future war. If you do not have a proper mechanism to tell you what is happening down there, then one day you may be surprised by a war situation. And the president is working seriously to make sure that the intelligence structure of this country is under his control. So we are fighting very, very hard to ensure that this country remains peaceful. If you come to Sierra Leone, you will discover that um, it is far more peaceful uh, than the United Kingdom, than um, the United States, etc., etc. And we are proud that this is the case. Um, some of our friends who came here to attend the conference from all over Africa, we are surprised that at 2 o'clock in the morning they still, still go to clubs and sit there and drink their beer. And in their own countries, it is not possible. Yes, your observation is very, very correct, that even though we went through a war situation, even though we had the difficulties of the Ebola, Sierra Leone can easily be rated as one of the most peaceful countries in West Africa and even in Africa. Well, I know that um, as a young man, even at university, we smoked cigarettes and uh, we drank beer. We entertained ourselves. Um, those are the days when we were young people. And uh, even later on, as a um, member of parliament, I took a pint of beer or two and um, I smoked a cigarette or two. But ironically, one day, I suddenly discovered when my doctor told me that the malaria in me had not gone away because I was smoking rather too much. So I told him, if that is the case, Mr. Doctor, I am going to quit smoking today. So I sat in my office, I called my driver, I told him, take this packet of cigarettes, take this cigarette lighter, I have quit. That was about 25 years ago. And from that day, I've never smoked a single cigarette again. At first, my friend said, oh, that's impossible, you won't make it. But I simply said, I have quit smoking today. And two weeks later, I traveled to, um, to England and I saw my friend Chrissy, uh, who used to drive me around in London. He was surprised that I sat in the car for nearly two hours without uh, fumbling for a cigarette. And he said, ah, Mister, where is, where, where, where are the cigarettes? I said, I quit. He said, is that true? Yes. So the fact of the matter is that from that day, I quit. And about alcohol, I quit alcohol years back. I simply believe that as a Muslim, um, if I can keep the fast uh, during the month of Ramadan for 30 days without smoking, without drinking, then it's possible for me to stop drinking. So one Ramadan period after the 30 days, I simply decided that I will not continue drinking. So this is why today I don't drink, I don't smoke. And again, talking about the young people, um, it is not the drinking that bothers me, it is the quality of alcohol that they take. We see most of these businessmen coming to set up uh, dangerous businesses, uh, producing alcohol that is very injurious to the school children and to the, to the young people, to me. And it has created problems. People have committed murder because they were totally drunk. And uh, we want to find a way by which we can correct this. Um, if it's just a matter of drinking a, pot, a pint of beer, it's okay. But now the quality of alcohol is dangerous. It makes some of the children totally mad. And if you talk to the psychiatrist uh, in this country, Dr. Nahim, he will tell you that 80% um, of our young people who have gone mad, went mad as a result of taking alcohol that is injurious to their own system. So we will continue to play, pray, we will continue to ask them 
we will continue to put in place the mechanism to make sure that uh, we protect our young people. I'm interested in young people. If you ask all the young people in this town, they will tell you that most of my friends are young people. And um, I like them because uh, they are the future leaders of this country. We have always argued that um, we must put in place um, an educational system, um, an environment that would make it easier for the young people to climb up the leader. That is point number one. And point number two, the young people themselves should be prepared to take over leadership. Um, Sierra Leone, if you move about and go to the various ministries, you will discover that most of our ministers are very young people. And their appointment was a deliberate move by the president to bring young people into government. And I assure you that these young people, um, the minister of um, youth, the minister of sports, the uh, minister of tourism, the minister in general of the eastern province, uh, all these are very, very young people. And it is left with them now to utilize the advantages given to them by us, uh, the elders, uh, to, 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 to move ahead and to become what they want to become. Now we are moving towards elections and people have started asking questions. Are we going to have another young person? Because people also want to have young people. And don't forget that um, if you look at the statistics, more than 60% of the voting people are young people. And if they are young people, the possibility is that if you have a young candidate, they will vote for him. And again, like I said, apart from them wanting to be president, we should introduce them to an educational system that would make it easier for them to participate in global politics. If you look at the president of France, a very, very young man, even though he's married to an elderly woman. Uh, if you look at the president of Canada, a prime minister of Canada, he's a very, very young man. And um, if you look at um, all the new, the emergent um, leaders, they are young people. But don't forget, these are people who have also been uh, introduced to a quality of education that will qualify them to become global leaders. Uh, it is not enough to say that um, we have, want young people. They must be educated. They must be able to sit down and talk to other leaders, understand the issues that are of uh, concern uh, to, the, to, to the people of the world, uh, because it's important for a leader uh, to be part and parcel of the global administration. To us, it's important. So this is why we want to encourage our young people to be part and parcel of this group. We want to encourage them to be able to acquire the kind of education that would make them um, acceptable leaders all, all over the world. I remember as a young man, I went to the president's residence, President Shekhar Stevens, on a Sunday like this, and then um, I found him playing the organ. And um, I stood there, I was watching him. I said, so the president can play an organ. And he turned to me and said, he said, look, Ibrahim, let me tell you one thing. Part of civilization is culture. And music is part of culture. If you want to sit down with your colleague president to discuss Stevensky or Bach and other people, you should be educated. And you should learn to be part of the process. So this is what we are saying. That if our people want to understand what climate change is all about, they should be exposed to the education that would make them understand climate change. If you look at the economic collapse of the world and the factors that have led to it, we must also educate our young people to understand those issues. Because if they are going to be the leaders of tomorrow, they should understand all of these things. We don't want them to be Donald Trump who will tell us that they don't believe in climate change. When climate change is eating up the rest of the world, to us, it is important that we give our young people an opportunity and at the same time we expose them to a quality education, which is also very important. Well, I can see both. I'm both the community leader and the politician. Um, I was talking to you about um, the politics of my life. Yeah. I took a very important part in the transition from President Shaka Stevens to President uh, Joseph Saidu Momo. Uh, because I was one of the young people in the country who thought that the transition from one president to the other should be smooth. And we did succeed in ensuring that the transition was smooth. And in 1985, I went to parliament and became a member of parliament. Uh, when I was in parliament from 85 to 
89 going to 90. I was also a very important and strong member of parliament. I was appointed secretary of the parliamentary association at the time. And um, until we had this difficulty of um, the military coup and the war itself. And then we took a back seat. Um, when the military uh, decided to go away, we all came back into politics. But now the whole problem is that uh, we have returned to multi-party democracy. At one time, some of us were worried that the multi-party democracy would ignite tribalism in Sierra Leone. Uh, because from earlier years, just after independence, we discovered that um, democracy was similar to tribalism. But this time around, thank God, um, we are doing our very, very best to make sure that we practice democracy without attaching uh, tribalism to it. Um, the president, Dr. Anas Baikoma, who is married to uh, an Easterner, even though he comes from the North, and a man who believes that even his own children should be brought up as Ceredonians, and a man who believes that even his government should have a national character, has done very, very well to reduce the potential for tribalism in this country. To us, it's very, very important. Now, transition after transition has been very smooth. President Kaba came in as the first president after the military, and then he contested again and won a second time. You know, our constitution does not allow you to go into office for more than two terms, and he left. And again, there was an election, and for one of the very first times in West Africa, a party from the opposition won, and this is how President Anas Bekoroma became president. He defeated the candidate presented by the incumbent government at the time. And the transition was very, very smooth. And the government, even though they lost, accepted the verdict. And President Koroma is also preparing himself to leave office because he has just completed two terms. And we are very certain that the transition is also going to be very smooth. Well, I've served the nation for close to 50 years. If you start from the period of um, a young um, secondary school teacher um, in 1969, 70, and um, going up to the point of vice principal, going to the point of um, principal, going to the point of director of the National Diamond Company, and going to the point of a councillor for statistics, going to the point of a chairman and president of the Stephen Association of Journalists, and you take into consideration uh, the roles are played all over the world, they have traveled all over the world extensively, and uh, I've presented papers all over the world. Um, I think I have done my best um, in serving this country. Well, I just did it because I thought that I should serve the country. If, as a journalist, I criticized quite a number of things in earlier years, and I thought if I go into it all, into politics itself, I should be able to correct some of the irregularities. I think I've done my best. Um, people used to scramble everybody to listen to my programs on television and radio. Uh, because I always came out with the facts and people admired uh, my presentations because I wanted always to be very practical and very frank and to work towards national development. Yes, I went into, into politics not for money. I went there because I thought I should serve my people. And um, as I'm trying to exit now uh, from full-time politics, I think I'll go home with the full satisfaction that I've served my people well. Yes, um, I have here with uh, me um, the former leader of Libya, uh, Muammar Gaddafi, who was a great friend of ours. And um, even after his death, I still recognize him as a great fighter for the independence of Africa. Um, when I was a journalist, and I'm still a journalist, and even later when I became minister in charge of information and communications in Sierra Leone, and made quite a number of visits to Libya, and sometimes with the president of Syria. And this picture is a picture which we took um, on his farm, in, uh, just outside Tripoli. And uh, at that time, he was expressing his concern about the role of um, Africa in the United Nations Security Council. Uh, he was trying to explain to me that Africa was not well and properly represented in the Security Council of the United Nations. 
and he was surprised that um, China was not uh, taking a major role or playing a major role to encourage other members of the Security Council to bring in more Africans to be members of the Security Council. As you would know, he was a very political person, a person who was interested in the development of Africa. And he also believed in Pan-Africanism. And this is why I kept on visiting him and we had quite a lot of discussions. Well, I was one of the people who thought that um, the African Union would do much to help Gaddafi, but I was in Brussels when I made quite a number of telephone calls to him and I told him to be careful because apparently I was not seeing any effort by any group to rescue him. And um, he was very, very happy that um, we telephoned him and we spoke to him. Um, yes, I was very concerned, but of course I also hold the view that the African Union could have done something else to save um, Gaddafi's life. This year, that this is from Civitan International, it's promoting um, democracy in Sierra Leone. Over the years, I've played uh, quite a number of um, um, parts in promoting democracy. Good day. I am Mrs. Ramatulai Benkagbo, the wife of Honorable Ibrahim Benkagbo. Um, we've been married for 21 years, and we have three kids biologically, and I have three stepkids, beautiful and wonderful stepchildren. He's been a very good husband, a very good father to me personally, because like I remember when I lost my dad, he made a promise to me, and thank God, He's been keeping up to that promise. He's not reneged one of his word. He's not just being my husband. He is a father, a mentor. He's my everything. He's my world. I'm actually not holding any political office. I am a private person. I used to work at the bank, resigned, and then I'm into printing and advertising. That's my own personal business. Just like I said, when you marry to a politician, automatically you become a politician. So, by extension, I am also a politician. To God be the glory, Sierra Leone is a beautiful country. Sierra Leone is a peaceful country. And I think what we need is what the government gave to us. And if I can go further, you know, biblically it is said, except the Lord watcheth over a city, the watchman watcheth, but in vain. So God has been our guide, God has been seeing us through, and he's been doing everything for us. We are of the same tribe, so we are of different religion. And if I should go further, the Bible says the believing wife will sanctify the unbelieving husband. So I can proudly say my husband is a Christian <laughs> because of me. <laughs>